Hi all, this is Dana here. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to start off uh, with an embroidery project. And the first part of that is obviously getting your design, put a couple here, onto your actual fabric. So the first thing to be aware of is there's actually quite a few different ways of doing this and uh, how you do it depends on your personal preference, uh, what materials you might have lying around, and also what kind of fabric you have. Like these are both light color fabrics, um, so they're pretty amenable to anything, but I mean if you're transferring onto denim or something that's stiff or heavy and isn't uh, translucent, and I'll talk about why that's important in a few minutes, uh, then that might determine which of these methods you're going to be using. Like this is a nice patterned fabric, this is just a plain white cotton, this is actually an old um, pillowcase that I had lying around that I was using actually for craft projects and I had some leftovers so that's just an old pillowcase sample so you can that's a good thing about embroidery you don't need any special fabric you can get all kinds of really beautiful fabrics but you can pick up pretty much anything you can stitch onto you can do uh, hand embroidery on all right so at first I'm going to be talking about uh, the tracing method of getting your design onto your fabric um, one thing to note too, I will be talking about this as well, is when you're design when you're depending on um, which method you choose, you may end up requiring that you flip the image first. Like if you're doing text and then you do a method where you're transferring it down on like that, that's going to obviously reverse your text. So that is something to be aware of, and I will talk about that with the various transfer methods I'll go over in just a moment. All right, so I'm going to show you the different methods that you can use for drawing uh, your design onto your fabric. I've got this little sampler here, so I'm going to fill this out for you. The first things I'm going to show you are these iron-on pens and pencils. These are kind of cool. I'll get the packages here. So here's the pencil and the pen. I actually got these pencils um, in a set with this special tracing paper. I got it from Amazon. Sorry, I'm just going to move the camera pad. So it's uh, designed for embroidery and such, but I mean I'm pretty sure normal tracing paper would work as well. But these uh, pens and pencils are quite neat. So what you would do is you would go up, so you'd print off your pattern as I showed you before onto paper and then you would tr uh, put it up against a window or use a light box and you'd trace your design. Obviously it's a little bit wonky but that's fine for this sample. So for the pencil, what I'm going to do is so you you've changed so your design is facing this way you've traced it front ways so we're actually going to flip it and this actually prevents your design from being reversed when you transfer it to your fabric so you're going to draw not super super hard but hard enough that it gets enough of the pencil in there and you can um put this in a in a freezer or whatever and sharpen it up it, it makes it harder and then it's easier to sharpen so you get a nice sharp tip on it so that's the pencil and then we'll do the same with the pen. So again, you're gonna flip it, do this on the back of your design. So that's why the tracing paper is handy. You can do this with normal paper as well. You're just gonna have to do it against a light box or against a window. All right, so that's that done. Get those out of the way. Oops. So first up, pencil's dropping everywhere. It's a pencil. So. My illustration, my pencil is on the back, and you're going to need an iron for this. Uh, it's best to have an iron that doesn't have steam on it, because the steam will kind of screw it up. So you're actually just going to press it down. If you need to um, pin this to your fabric, then do that to make sure it doesn't move. You, you want to give it enough pressure without actually moving the design. I'm just wiggling it a little bit, but I'm not actually moving the design. So give it enough pressure. Oops, you can see that I've just erased this, and I'll tell, tell you that why in a minute. So there you go. There's your design there. So you can see it's a little bit smudged, but the pencil's a little bit thick too. All right, the next one is going to be the pen. So again, you're drawing your pen on the back of your Piece. So it's a good idea to, to write something on the front so you know which way is which so you're not trying to transfer like magic marker or something onto your fabric because that won't work so well. So I'm just going to focus it there. Alright, so same thing again. Just try and give it enough heat and try not to move it too much. But obviously you don't want to scorch your fabric or your paper. 
what you can do is if you're not sure is you can just peel it up a little bit and see you can see it's transferred so there you go so there is that all right i've just uh, rewritten these on in a permanent marker so you can see them so we've got the iron on pencil here the iron on pen one thing to know with these is they might wash out but they're not guaranteed to wash out so do make sure if you're doing a design that's going to be like sort of quite an open stitch that you're not going to actually see some of these lines so you might want to be more careful if you're using some of these more slightly more permanent ones the next one is dressmaker's carbon i actually picked this stuff up from uh, my local needle workshop it's clover brand it's a shack copy this one is called you can see it comes in a bunch of different colors which is cool because you can do this on different uh, color of fabrics obviously these transfer techniques are going to vary depending on the texture of your fabric and also the color so I've got some blue here that I've been using for some other projects. So I'll show you this one. So I'll just grab a little illustration of a heart. And I will show you how that gets transferred. So I'm just going to on a scrap of paper here. Bad little heart, but you get the idea. All right. So what you're going to be doing is putting your carbon paper down onto your fabric where you're, you're wanting your heart to be or where you're, you're designed to be. Obviously, you're going to need a big enough sheet to cover your design. If it's really big, you might have to do it in sections and just keep moving the carbon paper. So you're going to place it down here. So again, your design is face up, so you're not going to get any reversing. So I'm using, actually using here a mechanical pencil, but I've actually dropped the lead in so it's not going to break and you can just use the tip. So you're actually going to be wanting to push quite hard. Not hard enough to tear your paper, obviously, but hard enough to transfer the carbon paper to the fabric. Now, one thing to know is you have to use dressmaker's carbon. Do not use normal carbon paper from a office supply store because that will not come out of your fabric. This stuff, I've tried it. It does wash out. But do give it a try on the actual fabric you're using. Ta-da! You can see it's transferred just fine. All right, and the next two aren't uh, necessarily heat, but this one is kind of cool because it is sort of a heat one. So this one, it's using these friction erasable gel pens. I've got my package here, as you can see that. So a lot of people have had issues with these in that um, sometimes if you're using them for gritting, say cross stitch fabric or drawing embroidery designs that they will end up, uh, the lines come back but I'm gonna show you a trick for that. So these are quite cool because these are actually meant to be used as normal pens and then here's your eraser here so you can write and then you can erase it here. But what this is actually doing is generating heat and so it's the heat that melts the ink. That's why when I wrote these with the pen, the, the titles and I put the iron on it, they all disappeared, all the titles. So I'm gonna show you this. So these ones you would, oh, sorry, camera locked over. Um, these ones I'm actually going to just draw directly on. If you are using a a pre-bought pattern like one of the samples that I'm going to be putting into my um, my Peacock Lounge shop for like freebie patterns to help you learn some of these stitches that I'm going to be teaching. Um, you can hold your fabric up to the window as I said or a light box or or just uh, sort of wing it basically you can try and draw yourself. All right so I'm just going to draw. Sorry if my hand's covering the camera. So you can draw a little heart there. So these are quite neat because they have a nice fine line so you can get a lot of detail that's the nice thing about embroidery is you can get a ton of detail in a small space you can with cross stitch as well but it usually means you have to use um quite small stitches in like a high thread count fabric all right so you can see my little marks there super cute all right i'm gonna move this out of the way and attack it with the iron and you'll see what happens it's really neat ready magic Finished. Cool, huh? So you can see there's a little bit of a ghosting here. You can still sort of see the outlines. Um, what I've heard works really well. I haven't tried it yet myself, but is if you iron the lines away and then you wash your piece as well, and that will help prevent 
that ghosting from being as visible, but you know, as you can see, it's just barely visible. And also the washing, uh, what happens with these pens, with, with the marks, if you get your fabric cold, like say you're putting it in a suitcase in, the, um, in an airplane, or it's being shipped somewhere, if it gets cold enough, or randomly if you're putting your stitching in the fridge, the lines will come back and they'll reappear and they'll be pretty much permanent. So what you can do is you can iron them away and then wash your piece, and that should get rid of any residual um, ghosting effects as well as mostly prevent it from uh, coming back later. All right, and then another type of pen that you can use, again, this is if you're just uh, drawing straight onto the fabric using your light box or just by eye, is your water-soluble pen. So these vary in quality. Definitely check and make sure it is gonna wash out when you're done. Uh, but yeah, so these ones are, this one actually does work well. I've tried it before and it doesn't leave any residual lines. So that's it. That we, you would rinse out when you're finished. And last but not least, we have good old pencil. And some people have said to me, oh, pencil's bad for the fabric. It's pH, you know, it's acidic and all that. It's actually not true. Pencil is uh, really inert. Graphite's really inert. That's why you'll see, like, you know, Michelangelo's pencil drawings and da Vinci's pencil drawings and they're still in perfect condition. The paper maybe isn't doing so good, but the actual pencil is still doing just fine. So pencil is totally fine. But again, you're going to have to make sure you're doing it in a way that your stitching is going to cover the lines because you're not really going to be wanting to try and erase your fabric. That's not going to be, it's going to smudge and be kind of, be kind of gross. Yeah, you can see you can get a nice crisp line. So that's good for planning out your designs and things like that too if you're adding extra stuff to a design. So that's your ones where you're drawing it on and I'm going to be showing you some other methods in a moment. All right so we've talked about different ways so you can transfer your uh, pattern using like tracing your design on like all of these different types of methods here. So now I'm going to be talking about one that's actually really, really cool, and it's using a photocopier. And unfortunately, no, you cannot put your fabric straight into the photocopier. That would destroy your photocopier, although the results might be hilarious if you're trying to break your photocopier. Um, so what I've got here, there's a bunch of different versions of this. This is called, I'm just going to move the camera a bit so you can see it, it's Sticky Fabra Solvi. So this one is, it's like a stabilizer, um, but this particular one is self-adhesive, so it will stick to your fabric. And it's water soluble. There's different versions of this you can get. You could get um, ones that are water soluble. You can get ones that are sticky. So you, like, uh, if they're just water soluble, you might have to pin or stitch your your photocopy down onto your fabric. The ones that are sticky, obviously, you don't have to, to stitch them down or or attach them in another way, like pin them down. Uh, there are some that are terrible away. So you would that that's mainly for things like machine embroidery, where you're doing like really really heavy dense stitching. You can actually print your design onto terrible. Um, it's, it's almost like a, a paper, and and then you would uh, tear that away once your design is finished. So this is this stuff here. I got this off of Amazon. It was a well in Canadian. It was like seventeen dollars for how many? 10, 12 sheets, twelve sheets of letter size paper. So it's a little bit expensive, but you can get this in rolls as well. So this is obviously the size is good if you're using a printer. Otherwise, you can actually um, trace this stuff as well. So you can see it's it's translucent. So you could use this as tracing paper as well and just draw directly onto the fabric. And I will actually did a little sample here. So I just drew that directly onto this and then you can stick it on so you can um, what you can do is if you don't if you want to get in, in a roll and you don't want to put it through a printer is you would get your printed design here so obviously you're going to print off the page of your pattern that has a design you'd overlay it and then you put it up against a light box or against a window and then you can actually trace it with a, a permanent marker it doesn't matter what marker you use for this because this is actually going to be stitched over and then it's going to dissolve away so i'll show you that in a moment so that's really cool stuff. And also uh, with a light box, you can get kids like Crayola light boxes. I think they have like these tracing light boxes that are like 20 bucks and they're really cheap. And it's basically just like a tablet with a, a light and you put your paper on it and then you can trace straight through. So that produces light from behind, which actually makes tracing a lot easier if you're tracing onto either the tracing paper I showed you before or onto something like this or even directly onto your fabric if it's thin enough like this one I actually trace directly onto the fabric because it's quite fine. So there's a couple options like that. You can use a tablet uh, if you have like a piece of glass to put over your screen because obviously you're not going to want to trace 
onto your pressure sensitive screen, that's not going to be so good, but you can put it on a white light and then trace over top of that if you put a piece of glass over your tablet or a window works really well too. All right, what you can see here is just a photograph of me working on an app on my iPad called Tracing Board. There are lots of LightPad apps, and this one was free. So as you can see, I've got my tracing paper, or sorry, my uh, photocopy of the pattern, and then I've got my fabric over top, and that's all overlaid over top of the iPad. I'm not using a piece of glass just because I'm not actually tracing the design. Uh, you could do the same thing with it up against a window. What I would recommend is taping your pattern to the window and then taping your fabric over top. That will help prevent the fabric from shimmying too much. You also will have to actually hold the fabric down to prevent it from shimmying as you're drawing. But this is a really great way to use either the water soluble marker or pencil or anything like that if you don't want to use any of the other transfer methods. So I'm going to show you this little sample here. So this is one that I just drew on. So it's super cool. So you have to make sure you, when you're printing to make sure it's face up. So this stuff has a smoother surface. It's like a slippery surface. And then it's got the textured surface. So you're obviously wanting to print on the textured surface. When I printed this one, what I did is I did a test. So this was facing up in the top right of my printer when I put the page through because that, that way so I did a test on this one first to make sure that I knew which way to put the paper up in my printer so you may have to do a test on your own printer if you're not sure which side your printer prints on all right so there's this little one here I just drew it on with a magic marker so you just peel it off it's like sticky stuff it's got a little sticky backing but the neat thing is, is you once you put it on which I will show you so you just stick it off and then you stick it down. Ta -da. So there. So what you would do is you would actually stitch directly over top of this. It's a little thicker to stitch through, obviously, than just stitching through your fabric. But you would use just stitch right through it. And then when you're done, you just wash this away. Like this is is, is water soluble stabilizer. So it will literally just wash away. So that's super cool. And if you're doing so, this is one I printed for some. Um, sample designs I'm going to be putting into my shop for the Peacock Lounge members so that they can practice some of the I'm going to be doing some embroidery tutorials shortly with different stitches so um, all these little designs will be in there for free so you just have to sign up to my mailing list uh, there will be a little pop-up uh, on the right side of your screen near the end of this video and also in the link there will be a description too to join up to the Peacock Lounge and then you'll have access to these free patterns once I put them on my site with the tutorials that go with them. So this one, you can see, so these are a little under three and a half inches wide. So this is a four inch hoop. So what you're going to be wanting to do when you're putting this on your fabric is you're going to want to have your fabric already taut, like as if you're about to start stitching. You don't want to put this onto your fabric and then stretch it because it's just going to make this bubble. So again, you're going to peel it off. and then center it. So for these designs I've done it so it's got like the little hoop around the edge of the actual design but you don't have to stitch that if you don't want to. That's just mainly for placement so you can make sure it's going to be centered on your hoop. It's actually quite sticky. There we go. So make sure it's nice and flat. Make sure it's nice and smoothed out. You don't want any bubbles or lumps or anything like that. And there you go. So when I start stitching this for the next video I'm going to be doing, which is about a running stitch and back stitch and a uh, spoke stitch or straight stitch, sorry. Um, these are the lines that I'll be following with my stitching. All right, so here's my finished embroidery. Uh, what I'm going to be doing now is rinsing away the um, the stabilizer, the water soluble stabilizer. So I'm just going to get this wet. So as I'm rubbing it, I can feel it getting sticky. So ideally you put this under running water, but because I can't move the camera, I'm just going to keep moving it, rinsing it. But you can see here it's coming away. So I'm just going to keep rinsing that until it's all disappeared. Sorry, it's going out of focus, but there we go. So I'm going to keep rinsing it until it's all disappeared. And then uh, what I would do is once it's finished is you can either let it air dry or you could iron it face down onto some towels. The towels will help protect the shape of the stitches. So yeah, that's it. 
Uh, if you have any questions about any of these transfer methods, please do let me know. Uh, like I said, things to be to decide which one you're going to use are the texture of the fabric. If it's bumpy, obviously it's going to be trickier. So something like this might work for a more textured fabric rather than trying to trace it onto your fabric or a darker fabric. This might work better. Um, and also to be aware that when you do certain designs, making sure that text and stuff is going to be flipped the right way around. And also uh, that some of the markers, like especially the the these uh, friction ones, like obviously they've disappeared now, um, but some of them may not wash out 100%. They, they may come back. Same with the water-soluble ones. Do test them before you use them on your entire project. I haven't had any issues with them, but that's just me. Uh, it could be the fabric too. And also these type of, like the iron-on ones, they say they can, what like the pencil can wash out, uh, I haven't tried it. This one, I'm pretty sure it's permanent, so do make sure that you're doing it in areas where you definitely 100% are covering that line with your stitching, that there's not going to be any uh, of your line showing through your stitching when you're finished. And that's it for now. Uh, talk to you later. Bye for now.